Are you sitting on the right or on the left? Are you sheep or goats? Now in the lectionary, it says that uh, whoever's reading the gospel, as Deacon Bill did, he, he, he or she should not be looking to the right or to the left to make people feel guilty. But then the other thing is, it depends on, like my perspective, it's just the opposite of yours. So you're all either safe or in trouble, <laughs> either way. Now, uh, of course, Jesus always used images that were familiar to people and goats and sheep were very familiar to them. And uh, during the day, sheep and goats would graze together, but at night they would be separated. And mainly because sheep are well padded, they have thick coats, so they can uh, withstand the cold. But she uh, goats are very bony and short-haired, so they needed to be protected more. So that's one reason why Jesus uses this separation of sheep and goats. There is a hell. There is a hell. But we don't know for sure if anybody is there. I would think that Satan and the fallen angels are there. I got into a conversation um, recently, like about two weeks ago, with somebody, well, it was actually on the verge of an argument, um, and I made the comment that um, I'm not so sure there is anybody in hell. And he very much disagreed with me. He said, oh no, there are people in hell. Well, then I became curious, and I consulted Dr. Google, and there were all sorts of articles on this. You know, all I had to do was type in, is there a hell? Well, and then, you know, about 20 articles. And one of the articles said that Thomas Aquinas and St. Augustine held that there are people in hell. But the church has never officially taught that, certainly not infallibly. And that really confirmed uh, my own position. Now, don't quote me, I, although I think they're recording this, so don't. <laughs> but I've always had this conviction that Jesus is standing at the gate of hell, making sure that nobody gets in, that nobody gets in. That's the good news. Now the bad news is that Jesus is standing at the gate of heaven making sure that nobody gets in until, until they've paid their dues, until they've done their work, until they've made recompense, and then they can go in. And I think that's what purgatory is. It's like a halfway house. It's like a hospital. It's a place of healing, a place of hope for all of us. God is very compassionate. God doesn't send anybody to hell. If anything, we send ourselves there. And we need to shepherd each other the way Jesus shepherds us. Anybody who's in a position of leadership, whether it be political or religious leadership, has been delegated for that and has the responsibility not only of being the leader but being a healer, being a shepherd, whether you're a parent or a teacher or a pastor or a president, being a shepherd is an essential part of that delegation. And that's what we're being called to this morning 
to be a shepherd and to imitate Jesus in his love. And that's why we come here, to be fed by the Good Shepherd, by the Word of God, and also by the body and the blood of Jesus, who loved us so much that he died for us, the King of the universe, crucified out of love for you and for me.